A different mindset can determine your entire lifestyle or your entire destiny. Paul talks about people who have a mindset on sin. They have frustration without faith, and they have profession without possession. And then he says those people are living without life. So first of all, Paul speaks about that kind of mindset. But secondly, he talks about the correct mindset that produces the correct lifestyle. He talks about the mindset on the spirit produces a lifestyle of peace. Look again at the last part of verse 6, where he says, The mind controlled by the Spirit is life, zoe, and peace. Doesn't that sound attractive? Is there anyone who really doesn't want to have a life that's full of tranquility, security, serenity, peace with God, and with the peace of God? The only way you can do that is to have your mind set on the Spirit. That kind of mindset produces the right kind of lifestyle. Let's look at the lifestyles of the redeemed and the faithful. Because this is what we're talking about. If you're full of the Spirit, you are faithful. You are redeemed. And you have a different kind of lifestyle. You have a lifestyle in the Spirit. Paul's going to say some things about the Holy Spirit's relationship to a Christian. Please understand again that Romans 8 is all about the Holy Spirit. In the first seven chapters... Paul only mentions the Spirit twice. In chapter 8, he's going to mention the Holy Spirit 21 times. Now, in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit has different titles. He's called the Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, the Spirit of Grace, the Spirit of Promise, the Spirit of Glory, the Eternal Spirit, And he's also called the Comforter or the Counselor. Here's the word meaning the one called alongside, which is what Jesus used when he's talking about the Holy Spirit to his disciples. Let's notice some ways the Holy Spirit relates to us as Christians. In verse 9, he says, We are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Four times in this passage, he says, The Holy Spirit lives in you. The Spirit lives in you. The Spirit lives in you. When you become a Christian, the very Spirit of God indwells you. Now let's look at John chapter 14, where Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit to his disciples. This is when he was alive on planet Earth, living in his human body. He says, now the Spirit of truth is coming. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives, and notice the prepositions, with you, and he will be in you. On that day you will realize that I am in the Father, you are in me. Again, notice the prepositions, and I am in you. Now, let me tell you something fascinating. When Jesus was alive in a human body for 33 years, He couldn't be but at one place at any one time. For instance, when he was in Galilee with his disciples, he couldn't be in Jerusalem. He could only be in one place at one time. He says, now I am with you. But when the Holy Spirit comes, he will be in you. Or literally, I will be in you. We become literally the dwelling place for the Spirit of God when you become a Christian. Not only does he talk about it here in the 14th chapter of John, but in another very familiar passage in 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, Paul says, What? Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which you have of God? You're not your own. What that means is the building we gather in is not the house of God. It's not the temple of God. As a believer, a Christian, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I heard a pastor tell this story once. They had a little problem at their church because there were people that sometimes were smoking in the building. And although their policy states very clearly not to smoke in the buildings, they discovered some folks were going into the bathrooms and lighting up. So I suppose they thought it was okay to do it in the bathroom, but not in the sanctuary. So someone put a little sign up in the bathroom that read, 
please do not smoke in the house of God. They, they thought that might work. Well, someone came along and added a little commentary to the sign, and whoever did it understood their theology correctly because they wrote, the house of God is your body, not a bathroom. And that's true. The building is not the house of God. You see, in the Old Testament, God had a temple for his people. But in the New Testament, he has a people for his temple. You must understand the Spirit of God lives inside a Christian. And we are to mind that Spirit. The word mind can be both a verb and a noun. We know the word mind when used as a verb means to pay attention and to obey. Mind your manners. Mind your teachers. Mind your parents. That's what Paul is saying here. I want you to mind the Holy Spirit. Put your mind on the Spirit and pay attention to Him and obey Him. First of all, we're indwelt by the Holy Spirit. The Bible teaches we as Christians and believers are to be filled or controlled with the Spirit. And we'll talk about that next time. Thank you, Lord, for living in me. Thank you that I have your Spirit in me. And I pray that every day I would mind that Spirit, that I would allow you complete control. And I pray that as we continue down this path, that our eyes would be opened to see how we can mind that Spirit daily. It needs our attention. It's so easy for me not to mind the Spirit. So speak to me, Lord, and give me ears to hear your voice and to do it. In Jesus' name, amen. Through all is and Charlie, my soul.